Hey guys, happy Thursday night. I know y'all are like, she already released the word today. What is she doing back? Guys, I did not plan on releasing this word, okay? This kingdom marriage word. I was not going to release this word. And it's from a dream that I had in the wee hours of this morning. And this dream is a complete parable. So I'm going to literally break it down to you guys how the Lord broke it down to me. So bear with me because as the Lord was downloading this dream to me or the interpretation of the dream, I was amazed at what he used to get a point across. Okay, guys. So y'all that have been following me for a while, you know that God speaks to me a lot in parables. This dream is a parable parable. Okay. And I was not going to release this word. I was like... God, is this the personal word for me? Like, what do you want me to do with this word? And it just so happened, and you guys know, I don't follow a lot of YouTubers. I have a handful of YouTubers that I know personally represent God wholeheartedly. And one of my sisters in Christ, um, her name's Alita, posted a word about marriage. As soon as I asked God... <laughs> Am I supposed to release this word to you guys? She posted this word from a dream she had about marriage. And my dreams, as well as Alita's dreams, I know a lot of you guys probably follow her as well. She is wholeheartedly, like, from God. The girl's authentic, okay? That is one person, like, I, you guys hear me talk about false prophets all the time. Like, she is not one of them, okay? God gave me a whole dream with her, this girl in it. Like, she is a, a true ambassador for Christ. Um, if you guys have, um, never heard of her, I don't know what her page, page is called. Um, but I'll try to link her video that she posted today about kingdom marriage, but I wasn't going to post this word. And I asked God, I was like, am I supposed to post this word? And as soon as I said that, not a little bit after she posted this word, okay, on kingdom marriage and Alita does not often post on kingdom marriage. She is just like me. When it comes to releasing, she releases what God gives her and kingdom marriage is far in between, right? So she rarely posts dreams about kingdom marriage. But when I saw her post, I knew I had to release this dream to you guys. And again, I was not going to. You guys heard me yesterday on 222. I was like, um, hold on guys. Oh no, yesterday wasn't even 222. Tuesday. 222. I was like, I don't have a kingdom word for you guys. Well, God gave me one in the wee hours of this morning. And this is for quite a few of you. And I get emails and stuff on kingdom marriages, people standing for marriages and so forth. And God has told them who their God ordained spouse is, but the spouse ain't acting right, blah, blah, blah. I went into prayer for people um, in their kingdom marriage, right? Those, some of you may know my story that God told me to stand for my marriage and my um, ex-husband is engaged. Um, so yeah, I don't really post on kingdom marriages. I will let God download whatever he wants to download to me about my personal situation in a dream. And he's done like over and beyond when it comes to my personal journey and my ex-husband. But I don't really post about that stuff because I'm rarely led to do so. Um, but I was led to post this one. So Whew, bear with me guys on this word because like I said, it's a whole parable and grab a drink and a, a snack, an Atkins bar, some tater chips, some veggie straws. I don't know. I'm naming all of the stuff I like to snack on, but grab a drink and some snacks. Um, if this is for you, you'll know it's for you. This is for people. Okay. Let me be specific because this is a specific word. This message is for people. It could be a man or a woman that God has told you who your kingdom spouse is. Um, that person knows that they're your kingdom spouse or the person may not know that they're your kingdom spouse. But God has told you specifically who this person is. This is not for you guys that God has promised marriage to and you're just in a waiting season. You have no idea. The, this is for men or women that have been one, separated from the person that God told you was your God ordained spouse Two, divorce from the person that God told you is your God-ordained spouse. Three, you know who your God-ordained spouse is and they're just out there doing the most, okay? Like, these are for the people that know, okay, who their God-ordained spouse is and 
Most of you are not in communication with that person, okay? I, I'm not in communication with my ex-husband. Like, I don't communicate with him. I have no idea what he's doing on the, the west side or south, whatever side he's on. I have no idea. Wherever he's at and what he's doing, I, I don't communicate with him. So these are this message is for people that have had limited communication with this person, but God told you to stand. They, he told you who your kingdom spouse was or your God-ordained spouse, people like to say kingdom spouse. Let me say your God-ordained spouse, um, you know who that person is. God has told you they're doing the most, separated, you're divorced, um, but God still told you stand. Like that's your kingdom spouse and it is what it is. This is for you, okay? So um, yeah, and those of you that it's for, okay, God will speak to you through this message. If you're not sure, take it to him because I don't want to leave anybody out um, that this is for, but that is what this is about. Okay. You know who your kingdom spouse is not for people that he's promised marriage to, and you're just in a waiting season and you know, you're being courted or, and so forth. No, this is for people that know who their kingdom spouse is. And you are not with that person right now. And nine times out of 10, the person is doing the most and living according to their own fleshly desires. <laughs> this is for you. Okay. And I have a coaching session at seven 30. So I got to get this word out before it's time for me to do this session. So y'all pray for me because this is a loaded word. Okay. So whew, this stream was in the wee hours of this morning and it was very long. Um, I'm not even going to give you guys the whole entire dream, but I'm going to give you what's important for you because this was a long dream and it's like it stopped and kept going like it. Yeah. Okay. So in this dream, um, I dream that my ex-husband's fiance, because he's engaged, she was embarrassed because um, he had cheated on her. My ex-husband had cheated on her and it was all over the news, right? So she was super embarrassed um, that he had cheated on her and that everybody knew about it, okay? Then it switched to me being on the phone with my ex-husband's mom, and she was telling me that my ex-husband and his fiance. Um, had beautiful twin boys, and one of the twin boys' name is Ezekiel, right? This is what she's telling me on the phone. And she was like, I'll send you pictures. Um, I never got the pictures, but she's like, I'll send you pictures. But um, they had twin boys. One of the boys' names is Ezekiel, okay? Take note of what I'm saying, guys, because all of this I'm going to break down. Then it switches to me being at a house with my sister Tara, and she was asking me, am I okay? Then it switches to me being on the phone with my ex-husband and he wasn't talking to me as we're on the phone, but he was in a business meeting. I can hear him like talking to other people about business. I don't remember what the conversation was, but he was in a business meeting and I was listening to the whole meeting. Like I heard my ex-husband's voice loud and clear and <laughs> I remember, and I wasn't going to tell you guys this part either, but I remember as I'm on the phone listening to him talk. I was like, oh my gosh, like I miss his voice. Like I'm like listening to him talk the whole time. This conversation had to have been like five minutes as I'm listening to him um, on this business meeting. And in the spirit, I knew that he was out of town. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit just reminded me of something that I'm going to include at the end too that I totally forgot about. Um, but yeah, I'm listening to him as he's talking and having a business meeting and I knew he was out of town, Okay. Then it switched to me being um, in a laundry room, right? And I think I still had the phone to my ear with him talking. And I was asking God, um, why would he have me stand for this person if he, ha he went and got somebody pregnant? And I remember being kind of mad at God, but then I, it quickly switched and I was like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason, Lord. I'm okay. I'll be okay. And I kind of repented for getting an attitude. I was like, I'll be okay. Everything happens for a reason, right? Then it switched to me in a car going to lunch with my friend Jessica, who works with me, right? She works with me in real life. We were in a car going to lunch, and I remember us going um, through this roundabout on the road, right, in the car. She was the driver. I was the passenger. And I remember as we were driving, I realized that we were right in front of my old elementary school that I went to in real life. And the name of the elementary school is called Naranja or Naranja, 
which means orange. But we were passing by the elementary school, right, as we're on our way to lunch. Then it switches to me watching Beyonce rehearse her music or get ready to rehearse her music. And she just walked out like I'm I'm watching her walk into this break room, put her lunch in the fridge, and she's getting ready to rehearse. She was so bold and confident, and she just, like, I knew she was about to kill this rehearsal, okay? She was there to, to do the job, right, to complete the assignment. She understood the assignment, okay? So I'm watching her walk in flawless, and she's getting ready to rehearse. End of dream. Now, when I woke up, guys, I laid there. And I know this dream is all over the place, but I'm going to break this down to you how God broke it down to me. Um, and it'll make sense for those who it's for. But in this dream, or no, once I woke up from this dream, I heard a doorbell in the spirit. And that's what Holy Spirit reminded me of as I was talking. That's why I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. But when I woke up, I heard ding dong, like a doorbell in the spirit, guys. Never heard a doorbell in the spirit before, but I did this morning. Okay. So that was that. So let me break this down to you guys, how God broke it down to me and bear with me because uh, this was a lot as you guys can see. And I know as you're listening to the dream, you're like, wait, Beyonce, then you went to lunch and you were in the lunch. It was kind of all over the place, but I'm going to break it down to you guys. So just bear with me, guys, because I have notes, Bibles, my uh, study book, concordance, like just bear with me. So... First part of the dream, um, my ex-husband had cheated on his fiance, right? And she was embarrassed because it was all over the news. Like people knew he had cheated on her. She was super embarrassed. That was the first part of the dream. That is pretty self-explanatory. But what God is saying in this part for you guys is that who God joined together, let no man separate, right? Right? So whoever that person, that wife or that husband choose to go and try to be with, that's not their ordained spouse, they end up cheating that other person, okay? The time that they're with that other person, that they're together, they're cheating them out of time because it's going to go nowhere, okay? Who God brings together, let no man, no woman separate, okay? So whoever your God-ordained husband, whoever your God-ordained wife, is entertaining, they are cheating that person, okay? And I don't care if they've had rehearsal dinners, they've met each other's parents, the friends knows, the best friend knows, they're in the process of planning this wedding. Whatever the case may be, guys, who God has joined together, not who we join together, but who God has joined together, let no man or woman separate. So whoever that other person is that's not you, They are being cheated, okay? And a lot of those other people will be humiliated when God closes off that door, okay? That was the first part of the dream. Very self-explanatory, okay? Second part of the dream, I'm on the phone with my um, ex-husband's mom, and I talk to her in real life. Like, that's my girl. Hey, Miss V, if you're watching. (laughs) But that's my girl. Like, I talk to her in real life. Um, But in the dream, I'm on the phone with her, and she's telling me, that my ex-husband and his fiance had beautiful twin boys together, right? And she goes, um, one of the boys' names is Ezekiel. Let me break this part down for you guys, okay? If you guys read in... Hold on, guys. All right. If you guys read in Abraham... Chapter 25, we're going to start at verse 21. This is when Rebecca finally was able to conceive, right? Because we know that she was barren, okay? This is Rebecca was Isaac's wife in the Bible, okay? She was finally able to conceive. And let's start at verse 22. But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed, there were twins in her womb. 
and the first came out red. He was hairy. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's hill. So his name was called Jacob. Okay, guys. In this dream, let's go back to the part. My ex-husband's mom was telling me that my ex-husband and his fiance had twins. One's name is Ezekiel, okay? The twins represented a conflict within um, my ex-husband's fiance's womb, okay? A conflict. You guys know um, Esau and Jacob were twins, right? They were twins in, um, in Rebecca's womb. They both came out and they were always at conflict with one another. And everything the Lord told her was going to happen, that they would be separated from her body. One would be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. That is everything that happened, okay? And we got we all know that Esau and Jacob were, were constantly at odds with each other, okay? Jacob was the one that the Lord loved. Jacob was also um, Rebecca's favorite. Excuse me, but Esau was his dad's favorite, okay? But they were constantly at odds with each other, okay? And I'm not going to get too much into that. Y'all can read that on your own. But basically, the twins that my ex-husband's fiance was pregnant with in this dream represented a conflict between two people, between two nations, okay? Follow me, guys, because I'll explain more as I continue the interpretation. It represented a conflict between two nations, okay? So it switched after that to me at a house with my sister Tara. Um, and her name, you guys have heard me say this before, means the doorkeeper. She was asking me if I was okay. Then it, 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 then it switched to me being on the phone with my ex-husband and him in the midst of a business meeting out of town. And I could hear his whole conversation, guys. He was just talking business. I was just listening. He wasn't talking to me. He was having a conversation. I heard him mention his twins to whoever he was talking um, with, but these were like business executives that he was in a meeting with, right, guys? And what the Lord is saying by these two parts is that whoever your God-ordained wife or husband has decided to bring in this mix, whether they propose to the person, they're just dating the person, they're committing adultery with the person by sleeping with them, whatever the case may be, all they're doing is having this person birth conflict in that womb, okay? She's carrying conflict because that relationship will not stand. It will not go anywhere. All this relationship is doing is birthing conflict between two nations, okay? Between God and this ordained spouse, okay? And God will always win when it comes to him being at conflict with anybody, okay? Because they didn't just reject you. When they rejected their God-ordained husband or their God-ordained wife, they rejected God because that is a marriage that's ordained by God, okay? So again, all this counterfeit person is doing, whether they know it or not, is birthing conflict between two nations while still being in this relationship with your God-ordained wife or your God-ordained husband, okay? Hope y'all are following me, guys. I know this is a whole parable, but... God made it make sense and it made sense to me, okay? Then Tara, the doorkeeper, who who is the doorkeeper of our lives, guys? Who is the person that closes and opens a door? It's God, right? Tara in the dream asked me, was I okay? Okay, God will always make sure that you're okay. As long as you're walking in the purpose that he set before you. And yeah, you may feel stupid. You may look stupid in front of your family, the other person's family, it may be private and nobody even knows what you're going through and you just feel stupid internally, okay? God will always make sure that you are okay, okay? Always, because you decided to walk and follow his commandments, even though you didn't want to, okay? Even though when he said stand for the marriage, you're like, no, that person did me wrong. I don't want to stand for anything. Or you may have grown spiritually and you're no longer even attracted to that person, but you're standing because God told you, that is your God-ordained spouse, okay? And you still have love for the person. You're still very much in love with the person. But the main reason why you're standing where you are is because God told you to. And you know that the plans that he has for your life as a husband or as a wife 
is what it is. It's the best way. It's the best route for you to take, right? So you're standing not for this spouse. You're standing because you want to be in the will of God and just know that God will always make sure that you're okay. The doors that need to be closed, he is going to close it. The doors that need to be open, he is going to open it. Don't put your hands on anything unless he tells you to put your hands in the mix. He is your doorkeeper, the doorkeeper to your life, okay? And he will always make sure things fall in alignment with the promises that he made to you, okay? Moving on, guys. As I'm listening to... My ex-husband on the phone with his business partner, he's talking about twins, he's discussing business. That was just God showing his communication to my ex-husband, okay? Because everything that God relayed to me about him being my spouse and vice versa, God will relay that to him. I don't have to tell him anything. The The same information that God has given you, man of God, or you, woman of God, about your husband or your wife, is the same information that God will pull your God-ordained spouse into the meeting room and sit them down and have a face-to-face, one-on-one meeting with that person, okay? They will have to meet with God and discuss everything that they chose to do opposite of that's not in his will, okay? At the end of the day, they have to have that business meeting with your father, okay? With Father God about what's going on, okay? Follow me, guys. That was the business meeting, okay? Okay? Then it switched from me um, listening to him on the phone to me being in a laundry room. And a laundry room, guys, is a place where you wash clothes. It's where you clean stuff, dirty stuff turns to clean stuff, okay? I was in a laundry room, okay? And I'm asking God, why would you have me stand for this person and he got someone else pregnant? I'm getting mad at God, but then I quit quickly switched. It's like a light switch slipped on and I'm like... Everything happens for a reason. Like, I'm okay. I'll be okay. And I started to repent for my attitude in that moment with God, okay? God had to take you guys through this process, okay? He had to take you guys. And this is not a physical pregnancy, guys. For some of you guys, it may be a physical pregnancy when it comes to your God-ordained spouse. But this, this in my dream, is not a physical pregnancy, okay? It's God showing his way of doing things. A lot of nights you guys went to sleep, man or woman of God, and this is for both men and women, you didn't know what was going on. You're asking God, like, why am I still standing and this person is still the same immature person that they were before? This person is still walking in the flesh. You didn't understand it, but God had a plan, his plan for how he was going to make these things, make this um, bumpy road grow smoothly, okay? He had a plan and you didn't understand it all the time. Right? The plan seemed kind of crazy to you. And you were like, God, this is nuts. Like, this person's engaged. They done got married. Like, you're still telling me to stand. What's up? But he has a plan, guys. He has a plan. And his plan, again, I was in the laundry room, is to make all things clean, all things new. When you wash clothes, you're washing dirty clothes, but they come out of that washer and they're clean. You can wear them again, okay? And I hope y'all are following me and listening with your spiritual ears and seeing with your spiritual eyes. The Lord had to take you through a cleansing process and he had to take that God-ordained husband or that God-ordained wife through a cleansing process, right? He had to throw y'all both in the washer. Y'all just went through two different things and it may not seem like to you that that person is being cleansed and washed, but you can't see everything. You can't see what God is doing, but he is doing a cleansing in the both of you. You may be at a point where you've been cleansed, okay? Let God take it from here and cleanse your God-ordained wife or your God-ordained husband. It's a process. It's like a wash cycle, okay? When I wash my clothes, it takes an hour for my wash cycle to complete and my laundry to be clean, okay? It goes through several different wash, spin, rinse, whatever, soak. God had to do that in this marriage because he was not going to bring you back the same person that you had before, okay? He had to cleanse that person. He had to cleanse you so that when you get ready to step into this marriage again, it is new. You can wear it again and it is clean. And I hope that's making sense, guys. You can wear it again. Just like you can wear clean clothes. Once they've been washed and dried, you put them on again. Like he wanted you to go into this marriage and it be cleansed. Cleansed from all the dirtiness, okay? Undefiled, okay? That is what God is saying with this part. 
You don't have to worry about how he's doing it or what he's doing. Just know that he's doing it and you'll be okay. Because the way that he's doing it, like I said in this dream, I said everything happens for a reason. I'm okay. I'll be okay. You're okay. You'll be okay. Everything happens for a reason. And it's all God's timing. It's his ways. It's his thoughts. Let him do a cleansing in this marriage, okay? He is cleansing it and and it's going to be better than it was before. Okay, guys? Moving on. Then it switches to me and I'm, it switches, not to me. Then it switches and I'm in a car with Jessica. Um, she's my friend at work for real, in real life. She lives in California, not here. So I'm in a car with her. She's the driver. I'm the passenger. We're going to eat lunch, right? <laughs> Jessica's name means God beholds. God beholds means God sees, okay? So in this dream, Jessica was the passenger, meaning she was leading the way. The Lord is showing you in this part that he's the driver, okay? He's the one that can see up ahead, around the corner, the next block over. You're you're the passenger. Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, okay? He is the driver. He knows how to get you there, and he knows how to get you there on time, even if you think, like, no, God, um, this is late. Like, this is taking too long. He can see up ahead. He can see around the corner. He can see what you can't see. Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, okay? He's taking you to lunch. By the time you get to the restaurant to eat, as in by the time you get to this marriage to eat, okay, that food is going to be hot, ready, and good. He is taking you to lunch. He is preparing a table in front of your enemies for you to feast at, okay, guys? He sees, meaning he knows his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Let him drive. You sit back, put on your seatbelt, put on some music and chill. Because at the end of the day, when he brings that food to your table, you will feast in front of your enemies. God's word will never return void. I don't care who's against you, who's saying that's not going to happen. He didn't tell her that. Let them talk. Okay. At the end of the day, God's going to take you to lunch and you're going to feast in front of your enemies. Okay. Let him drive. Let him take you to lunch. You just sit in the passenger side and relax, okay? Then I notice as we're driving, we are passing by my old elementary school, guys. And my old elementary school is called Naranja. That's the, the English word for it. It's Naranja Elementary. But in Spanish, it's Naranja, which means orange, right? Okay, so this is what God gave me from this part. Orange is a mix of red and yellow put together, right? Red and yellow make orange, okay? Follow me, guys. Jacob and Esau. Esau came out red, right? His whole body was red. He was red and hairy, right? Red in color, um, for how God gave it to me for this dream, represents the flesh, okay? Red represents the flesh. Yellow how God gave it to me in this dream represents trials. And if you guys go to scripture, it says that gold, which gold is yellow, right? It's a form of yellow. It's, it's tested by fire, okay? God gave me yellow for this dream as trials. It means trials to be tested, right? Trials, tribulations. So when you mix the flesh, plus the flesh, which is red, plus yellow, the trials together, it makes orange, in which the orange represents the fire of God, okay? Naranja, again, we were driving past Naranja. Naranja means orange, not on hot. In Spanish means orange, okay? And I know God, God speaks to me in parables, guys. So you, I know you guys are like, wait, what? Yes, it means orange. And orange, again, flesh, red, plus yellow, trials. And remember, red was Esau, Jacob's brother, the twin, okay? That together equals orange, and that's the fire of God. The fire of God means deliverance, okay? Deliverance, purification, okay? Scripture tells us God is a consuming fire. His consuming fire, guys, cannot be put out with water, okay? When his consuming fire steps into the building, okay, all knees have to bow, okay? All obstacles have to fall. All issues have to move out of the way, Anything that was in the way will be burned up, okay? He consumes, meaning he devours, okay? In the dream, keep in mind, guys, we were driving. I was in the car with Jessica, which means God's behold, God beholds, and we were driving past Naranja, okay? God is bringing his consuming fire to burn up everything that is not of him, 
okay, guys? And this is not something that's in the far off 10 years from now. No, this is going to be a suddenly thing for a lot of you guys, okay? His consuming fire is going to burn up everything that he did not ordain, everything that is not of him. And when his consuming fire comes through, it can't be put out. Nobody can put it out, okay? He is a consuming fire, meaning he devours all things, guys, all things. And that's why we were driving past Naranja, not Anha, orange, meaning his consuming fire, okay? The way he's taking you may seem long to you, but that is his consuming fire, guys. That is what he's doing in the process. That is his process. It's a part of his process. Let him drive, okay? Let him drive because what he's about to do, only he can do. He does not need your help. When he does tell you to jump in, then you jump in. But until until then, sit on the passenger side and enjoy the ride to lunch, okay? Then it switches to um, me watching Beyonce <laughs> get ready to rehearse um, her music or whatnot. She, she's flawless. She's walking in. She's bold. She's fierce, guys. God used her two reasons. Her name, Beyonce, means the one who surpasses others, guys. <laughs> Beyonce means the one who surpasses others. To surpa surpass means to outshine, to outdo, okay? But her name, Beyonce, means the one who surpasses others, okay, guys? And God gave me this scripture, and it's Proverbs 31, verse 29. The New Living Translation says, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all, okay? You surpass them all. And if we have to switch this around for the brothers, okay? There are many virtuous and capable men in the world, but you, sir, surpass them all, okay? This is Proverbs 31, verse 29. The Lord is saying, many may have came in the mix. That person, that God-ordained spouse may have dated many people. They may have entertained many people. They may have been engaged or married to many people throughout your waiting season, but you, man of God, you, woman of God, surpassed them all. You outdid them all. Why? Because you are the person that God ordained for that person. And because he ordained you to be with that husband or to be with that wife who he puts together, let no man separate. There is not one person that can replace you. Not one. I don't care who comes before you or who comes after you. Nobody, nobody can surpass you, okay? Like you are that God ordained spouse. Okay, Esau came out before Jacob, but Jacob was still God's favorite. Okay, even though Jacob came out after Esau. Okay, that was still God's favorite. It does not matter who comes before or after you. The party don't start until you get there. So until they fall in line with the will of God, it will not last. It will be built on sand and it will fall. Okay, it will fall, guys. All right. And the Lord also had me read, and you guys are going to find this. God is so smart. He's so smart. But he had me read. Remember, um, let's go back a little bit. When I was on the phone with my um, my husband's mom, and she said, she's pregnant with twins. She was telling me that his fiance is pregnant with twins. And she's like, one's name is Ezekiel. Okay, guys, let me break that part down, how God broke it down to me. Ezekiel, guys, means the strength of God. That is the name meaning of Ezekiel. And I already read to you guys in Genesis that the twins in Rebecca's womb symbolize the fight between two nations, right? Follow me, guys. Ezekiel, my um, husband's mom, my ex-husband's mom said one of the twins' names was Ezekiel, okay? Ezekiel, again, means the strength of God, okay? So... The kids in my in my ex-husband's fiance's womb, Ezekiel, the strength of God. The other one is the strength of man, okay? That's that God-ordained spouse, that husband, that wife, and God, okay? The strength of God, Ezekiel, and they are going to bat. And one thing about that fight, God has already won it, okay? <laughs> That's the fight between two nations. Again, whoever the counterfeit person is in the mix of this is just birthing conflict, okay? She's bir She or he is birthing conflict conflict, all right? Conflict between the strength of God and the strength of man. And man, I mean, I'm sorry, the strength of God and the strength of man. And the strength of God will always win, okay? That whole relationship that that 
that counterfeit woman or that counterfeit man is in is such a waste of their time, okay? All they're doing is birthing and carrying conflict, okay? That's about to come to a head by God's consuming fire, okay? The Lord also had me read, and this is why I said God is so smart. He's smart in general, but he also had me read um, Ezekiel chapter 35. And chapter 35, I won't read it to you guys. I'm just going to give you guys a cap of so that you know how God speaks to me. And these parables, they get real, okay? Because I really had to study this dream. So, yeah. So in Ezekiel chapter 35, it talks about how the Lord was getting ready to judge and bring his wrath on Edom, right? E-D-O-M. And the reason why he was getting ready to bring his wrath that down on Edom is because, number one, they um, had hatred against Israel, okay? The Edomites gave, the, gave Israel... Um, Pretty much, let me try to sum this up for you guys because I'm trying to rush because I have coaching. But the Edomites pretty much um, gave Israel to the power of the sword, right? They gave them over. The Edomites did Israel really wrong, okay? They were also under God's wrath because um, when Israel and Judah fell, Edom, or the Edomite, Edomites, however you pronounce it, greedily desire to take the two lands for itself, even though God promised the land to the Jews. I'm going to repeat that for you guys. One, the Edomites or Edom, they, they hated Israel, okay? So God was getting ready to restore Israel and judge Edom. He was getting ready to bring his wrath upon the Edomites or Edomites, however you pronounce it, but it's E-D-O-M, Edom, okay? Then Edom was going to feel God's wrath because when the two nations, Israel, okay, and Israel, aka Jacob, guys, read your Bible. I hope y'all are following me. Israel is Jacob. Israel and Judah, when they had a great fall, Edom stepped in to try to take over what the Lord had already promised to the Jews, right? They tried to take over, even though God had promised whatever his promises were to the Jews, but the Edomites or Edom tried to take over, okay? And this is why they were about to feel God's wrath, okay? Nobody can come and take what God has ordained just for you, woman of God, just for you, man of God. All that leads to is that person feeling God's wrath, okay? Nobody can step in and take anything from you that God has said, that is my daughter's spouse, that is my um, son's spouse. It is what it is. Nobody can come take that from you, okay? And the funny thing about it, guys, is Edom, E-D-O-M, in Hebrew means red, right? And red, again, was the color of Esau as he came out of his mother's womb, okay? There was Jacob and Esau. Again, the conflict between two nations, Edom who is about to feel God's wrath in Ezekiel chapter 35, the meaning of Edom is red. Okay, excuse me. The, the Hebrew meaning of Edom is red. This is how strategic God is. And I hope I'm making sense, guys, because I'm trying to get this message to you guys while I'm talking super fast because I have to be on a coaching call very soon. But Edom means red in Hebrew, guys. What the Lord is saying in this scripture is that his wrath is about to be felt, okay? Because when he ordains something and he says, this is what it is, that is what it will be and nobody can take your place, okay? All that leads to is to humiliation for whoever um, that person is, that counterfeit is, and it leads to the, the ordained spouse having to sit down and have a business meeting with God, okay? And God wins every single time, guys, every single time. Whatever is going on between this, um, your ordained spouse and the counterfeit, all it's doing is birthing conflict between two nations. And that's between the strength of God, Ezekiel, the strength of God, and the strength of man. The strength of God is going to always win, okay? I hope this dream made sense, guys. I was talking fast. The whole thing was a parable. No, I don't hope it made sense. For who it's for, it, it made sense. But that's what I have for you guys. Um, yeah, you surpassed them all. Wipe your face. Wipe your tears if you're crying. If you're like, God, are, 
are you still like, is this still my God ordained spouse? God does not change his mind. Okay. And I know a lot of y'all are like, Lord, raise another. Like, I'm tired of waiting for them. You want to be in the will of God. And that's what I had to learn. I want to be in the will of God. It's not even that you, you're so crazy about this person, but it's like, no, God said that that's what, that's who it is. That's who I'm supposed to be with. I want to be in the will of God. And if he's bringing this marriage together, it's for a kingdom purpose. It's for our marriage to be a ministry. You want to be inside of the will of God, guys. So... I know this blessed somebody, did not plan on doing that because it took a lot of mind power. Like, guys, when God gives me these type of parables, I have to study. And then even though I understand it, I have to make it to where his children could understand it, right? Feed my sheep. God says, feed my sheep. So I have to make it sure, I have to make it sure. I have to make sure that who the word is for, you guys also understand it. So I think I, I, um... I completed the assignment. Um, hey, yeah. You surpassed them all, brother. You surpassed them all, sister. <laughs> Nobody can come between what God has ordained. Y'all see me flipping my long hair, guys. Yeah. No, you surpassed them all. Nobody can take your place. You are the plug, okay? You are the plug and any other, uh, I don't know. You, you are it, okay? <laughs> so I love y'all. Oh, 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 guys, the doorbell that I heard in the spirit when I woke up, the Lord is saying, it's near, it's right at your door, okay? It is, that's why I said it's not far off. Thank you, Holy Spirit, almost forgot that part. The doorbell that I heard in the spirit when I woke up after this dream was just God's way of saying, it's near, it's right at your door. So don't give up, don't give in, don't throw in the towel. His timing, not yours, but it is near. It's not far off, guys. And I literally heard ding dong like a doorbell in the spirit. Never heard that before, but he's saying it's near. And that part is also for a lot of you guys. So yeah, that's all y'all. I love y'all. I gotta get ready for this coaching session, but y'all have a good night. Send me your prayer requests. Dream interpretation coaching, confidence coaching, purpose coaching is open. Schedule sessions on my website. Um, prayer requests, send them to me. Um, guys, please don't send me a whole bunch of dreams after you hear this word and know that it's for you to interpret a dream. And no, 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 I, I will not interpret dreams via email. Schedule dream interpretation coaching so I can teach you how to. Um, interpret your own dreams, okay? As you guys can see, the Lord has trained me up for this, okay? Your girl has to be like she's in school when she gets off work for a lot of these dreams, okay? Schedule a session with me, but send me your prayer request. If you just want to say, hey, say, hey, if this word blessed you and you don't want to put your um, comment in the comment section, shoot your girl a message. But I'm praying for all of you guys that God has told you who your spouse is and it seems like nothing is moving our God is a big God and these um, houses or homes that these um, God ordained spouses are trying to build with other people. God has shown me that in a dream too. They will fall. Okay. His flood is going to wipe it out. His tornado is going to create a whirlwind. It will not stand guys. It will not stand. So yeah, they could either <laughs> do this thing voluntarily or do it involuntarily okay they could be like um i can't even think of his name right now because i've been talking way too much the 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 one who tried to run from god and was swallowed by the will okay jonah they can be a jonah okay either way god gonna catch you like his will will be done okay you can hide you can run you can do whatever you want to do um but all it takes is for him to bring that will that great fish yeah it'll swallow you and then they have to sit down anyway so yeah they will have to answer to god when they deny you they deny God, okay? Because you were sent by him. You are the ordained spouse, okay? So yeah, that's all. Love y'all. Bye.